Happy Halloween, everyone! We're gonna turn me into a blue bunny witch, demon slash magician, whatever you wanna call it. This look is inspired by my sculpture Coco, this one right here, which is another favorite piece of mine from my 2020 solo show in LA. I'm starting out with outlining the shape of the bunny nose so that I know where to apply the adhesive. I got this foam latex prosthetic from AFA Supplies. Surprisingly, it fits my face pretty well and is comfortable to wear. I'm applying some prosade on the edges of the prosthetic also on my face, focusing mainly on the areas near the lines. You want to give it a few minutes or until the liquid turns transparent and becomes tacky. Overall, this part went pretty smoothly. I feel like I messed up a little bit around the left cheek part near my mouth, um, which you guys will see later once it's painted. The area around the upper lip is the trickiest part. In hindsight, I should have trimmed it a little bit to clean up the edges first. Now I'm applying some liquid latex using a q-tip around the edges of the prosthetic to blend them in. While waiting for it to dry, let's block my eyebrows. First, I'm coating my entire eyebrow with Elmer's purple glue stick and then using a spoolie to brush up my brow hairs to keep them in place. Once everything dries completely, I'm using a translucent powder to set these areas and we're ready to move on to the painting part. I'm sketching out the clouds first to have an idea of how it will look like. I'm painting my face using a light blue water activated face and body paint. The color is so pretty and opaque and it's very easy to blend. I'll link everything down below for you guys. You can also apply the paint using a sponge. But I think a brush is better for getting to the small creases and edges on the prosthetic. I'm also covering my ears because I don't want any skin color to show. By the way, try drinking water without breathing through your nose. It's a struggle. Actually, don't try it. It might be dangerous. Put in the color contact lenses because we're are moving on to the eye makeup soon. When I'm painting the clouds, I'm trying to focus on blending. I don't want to have any sharp edges. I'm also adding a little white on the bunny nose and the center of my lower lip to create some highlights like I did on my sculpture. So when I was picturing this character and brainstorming like I make a look ideas in my head. I thought it would be cool if I can make her look like she has a cute side and a badass side. And that being said, I'm going to create two different eye looks. Starting with the right side first, I'm using ultramarine blue face paint as a base color. I'm applying the color all around my eyes using a small stipple brush and blending it towards my temple and upper cheek. Adding more lighter shades of blue around the edges to create a subtle gradient transition to the blue sky color. Now I'm going back to paint the nose. I know I'm all over the place. Just adding some blush tones around the nostrils and my lower lip to emphasize those areas even more. covering my entire lid using the white paint as a base. Dabbing on some light blue eyeshadow around my eyes to powder the area. Not sure how exactly I want to do the eyeshadow yet, so I'm just laying down some teal color on my lower lid. I want to take a minute to appreciate this ColourPop eyeshadow palette. It has so many hues in different shades and some with shimmers and glitters. The colors are pigmented and it's perfect for doing a fun makeup look like this. Initially, I was going to do a smoky eye look, but now I'm just expanding the areas where I applied the black eyeshadow to the entire eye socket and also adding more deep blue and purple shadow to create the night sky look. Starting to paint the lightning bolt, I'm using the same white paint I used throughout this video, painting the main bolt first and then switch to a tiny detailed brush to add more skinnier branches. Put on some lashes. The white lash is a bit too dramatic for my small eye. So now I feel like I have a fluffy white caterpillar on my eye and it's quite heavy too. For my left eye, I decided to do a gradient colorful liner look using the teal ultramarine blue and the purple shades in this palette. To finish off the eye makeup, I'm using a lighter lavender color to connect the upper and the lower liner. Thank you. 
after a short break, I'm just adding some finishing touches, like the gold tear drip under my right eye and some rhinestones around my left eye. Quick outfit change. This pink dress I had for years, I thought would be perfect for this look. Now I need to finish painting my neck, chest, arms, and hands. By the way, just be aware this paint is not transfer free. You probably need to set the paint using some powder or setting spray. All my stuff is covered in blue paint. I had so much fun cleaning the aftermath. So I'm just putting the wig on and trying to hide my natural hair. Next, let's bring out the star of the show, which is the pink hat. Here's how I made the hat. Since I didn't have a lot of preparation time, so I just bought a white felt top hat from Amazon and painted it entirely in pink. To create the creepy smiling face on the hat, I used paper clay because it's more lightweight, but I haven't used it for sculpting intricate shapes like a face before. First, I sculpted a basic form and glued it onto the front of the hat using some super glue, and then I started sculpting more details. I struggled a little bit in the beginning. It took me some time to get used to the texture, but the rest of the sculpting process went pretty well. You can use water to blend and smooth the surface. I'm not sure about the working time, but it took me about two hours to sculpt this face. Afterwards, I let it air dry overnight because it takes paper clay at least 24 hours to dry completely. The next day, I painted the face using my airbrush and high flow fluid acrylics. I tried sanding it before painting, which is my routine, but I don't think paper clay is standable. By the way, I always have people ask me how do I make my sculpture so smooth? There's a lot of sanding goes into the process that I don't record because sanding is just really messy and I think it's pretty boring to watch. I usually would spend at least an hour on sanding, um, but for bigger sculptures, it would take me two hours or even longer. I love how it turned out. I was trying to paint it as close to how I painted the original sculpture as possible. While waiting for the paint to dry, I made a lot of ribbon bows over 100 I think, um, to cover the entire hat. I definitely underestimate how much ribbon I would need for this. Before gluing down the ribbon bows, I sprayed a layer of Mr. Super Clear on the face to seal the paint, and then onto the fun part. To make it more interesting, when I'm attaching the ribbon bows, I positioned each one of them facing different direction, so they look more random. I did enjoy this process, despite getting burned by the hot glue a few times. So please be careful. Here is the final look. Welcome to the magic show. <laughs>